Well, the latest round of negotiations between Russia and Ukraine have been held in Istanbul. Turkey has maintained deep military and trade ties with Russia despite its NATO membership. But Ankara has also backed Ukraine in this invasion, describing the conflict in its Black Sea neighbor as unacceptable. So how can Turkey balance this delicate, delicate relationship as the war continues? Hakan Akbash is a senior advisor with the consultants, the Albright Stonebridge Group. Um, welcome to the program, Hakan Akbash. First of all, Turkey has not joined the call for global sanctions on Russia. How big is its stake in finding uh, a peaceful resolution to this conflict? Uh, Jamie, thanks for having me uh, today. Um, obviously, uh, Turkey's economy is dependent on uh, sort of smooth relations with Russia. Uh, tourism, uh, we're expecting 7 million tourists uh, to Turkey from Russia. Uh, Russia has been uh, one of the top uh, trading partners uh, with over 23 billion uh, in volume. And uh, obviously, just like Europe, uh, Turkey is uh, dependent on imported uh, oil and, and gas from Russia. So it's been walking a tightrope. Uh, between uh, United Nations and, and, and fulfilling its obligations towards NATO without uh, taking an anti-Russian uh, sort of uh, stance. And uh, thanks to that position since the beginning of the, uh, the, the conflict, uh, Turkey has, been, has made several attempts to, for peaceful uh, sort of uh, talks to, uh, to continue as when it's going on in Istanbul as we speak. How has this uh, invasion changed Turkey's role in NATO? Uh, because, of course, it controversially uh, bought uh, the Russian S-400 missile defense system in defiance of the United States. Uh, right. Um, it, obviously, there is the um, uh, S-400 uh, purchase decision, uh, which was before the Ukraine-Russia uh, uh, conflict. And uh, it is a brand new world uh, right now. So uh, as NATO will need to redefine its mission towards now Russia, and uh, its likely path even beyond, within Ukraine and beyond Ukraine, I think Turkey's position, uh, especially in the southern periphery of uh, EU and NATO, has become stronger. So that has helped uh, within NATO to President Erdogan so uh, the S-400 remains uh, an issue, but I think that uh, given the recent developments, uh, that would uh, certainly help uh, Turkey's hands vis-a-vis -vis the United States. And uh, parties have established a strategic dialogue mechanism, i.e. U.S. and uh, Turkey, to uh, actually find a permanent solution to the S-400 uh, issue. And Turkey has been trying to position itself in this conflict as, as the mediator. But there are concerns, aren't there, about uh, perhaps uh, Turkey lacking credibility uh, in Moscow. Does it? Is, is that fair? Well, uh, obviously, on the one hand, um, obviously, uh, Ukraine is one of many battlefields uh, that Turkey has uh, run against Russia. Obviously, Syria and, and what's going on in Idlib uh, is one big chunk of it. But there's been also uh, what's going on uh, in uh, Azerbaijan, uh, between Azerbaijan and Armenia, as well as in Libya. So, um, a, a, again, um, a, from an economic and trade perspective, uh, Turkey and Russia has enjoyed uh, sort of prospering relations. But geopolitically speaking, uh, there has been areas where they were on the opposing side. But I would not characterize uh, Turkey's sort of position in the Ukraine-Russia uh, conflict as such, because I think Turkey, despite it being a NATO member, it's the only country that can still offer off-ramps to uh, both countries. And uh, we need to give peace uh, a chance. And uh, I doubt that uh, Mr. Putin will uh, pursue, will, would like to pursue a diplomatic solution, but at least uh, Turkey is one of the few countries that is uh, creating platforms uh, to make sure that uh, peace will have a chance. Hakan Akbash in London, good to get your thoughts. Thanks very much indeed for coming on the program. Thank you.